Now on Denver 7 News, multiple people are dead after a mass shooting at a New York grocery store. I seen a guy in a full army suit just shooting shots at people. What we are learning about the man behind the shooting and why the FBI says it could be racially motivated. We're all left really perplexed and dismayed, not only about the criteria for closing schools, but also for how the process works. Plus, two Aurora schools in danger of closing. Parents now fighting to keep them open. Why they say the district isn't being transparent. I don't think it's going to correct in 2022, and it may not get completely corrected in 2023. And bad news for Coloradans needing a new car. Why some dealerships are running out of inventory and looking at empty lots. Thank you for watching Denver 7 News at 5. I'm Jacqueline Allen. And I'm Brian Wang. We begin tonight with the violent shootings happening across the U.S. At last report, at least 10 people have been killed in a mass shooting in Buffalo, New York. Police say it happened earlier this afternoon at a top supermarket and that the shooter is in custody. At least 10 people are dead and three others injured. Four of them were store employees. The others were shoppers. The FBI is investigating this as a potentially uh, a potential hate crime and racially motivated shooting. A witness describes what he saw happen. I seen a guy in a full army suit just shooting shots at people. And I seen a security guard run in the store. And then um, I seen the guy go in army style, bent over, just shooting at people. And I heard him shooting at people. And then I saw three people laying down. Wow, and overnight in Milwaukee, 20 people were shot a few blocks away from where the Milwaukee Bucks were playing in the NBA playoffs. 17 of those people were shot in a single incident and three in a separate incident. Police have now arrested 10 people and a citywide curfew has been put into place for tonight. No one died in those shootings. And we all remember the tragic mass shooting in Boulder last year. And just like today's shooting in Buffalo, it also happened at a grocery store. Going deeper, just this week, the city of Boulder discussed new gun restrictions. Those include banning the sale of assault rifles, high capacity magazines and devices that help pull the trigger quicker. Another restriction would ban all guns in sensitive areas such as city buildings and grocery stores. The council will vote on these measures on June 7th after a public hearing. In Aurora, parents, students, and teachers rally today to keep their schools open. Denver 7's Christian Lopez explains why they feel the district isn't considering what's best for the community. Parents and teachers from Sable gathered to have their voices heard. They say that they are a very tight-knit community and they would be heartbroken if their school were to close. They also say they feel like the school board is not being transparent when it comes to the reasons why they're closing certain schools. This is not just a decision about balancing a budget. This is a decision that will have ripples for generations of communities in Aurora. It doesn't seem to make sense. I keep just trying to find somebody to make it make sense to me. Adam Woods has two kids who attend Sable Elementary. He and several other parents, teachers and students are fighting to keep their school open. Back in March, the APS Board of Education was looking at closing Sable and Paris Elementary schools due to a drop in enrollment. The vote didn't pass, but now it's back on the table, leaving many people wondering why. We're all left really perplexed and dismayed, not only about the criteria for closing schools, but also for how the process works. Um, their board policy is very confusing. I understand that hard decisions need to be made, but we don't need to make hard decisions for the sake of making hard decisions. We need to actually actually understand the reasoning by you know behind why we're doing what we're doing and figure out you know if that's really the best case the best course of action some in the community say these school closures would have long-lasting impacts in Aurora for generations to come it's a decision about whether the institutions in our students communities are for them or against them it would be painful because our community relies on our school, not just for educational services, but other services. In a statement, APS Board President Debbie Gherkin said in part, quote, We recognize that this continued uncertainty is both difficult and upsetting. Please know we take our responsibilities as board directors very seriously and consider every aspect of these critically important decisions, including the impact on the community. Now some parents, like Woods, are considering whether or not they want to stay in the district. 
You gotta try to figure out if I'm even gonna continue to send my kids to APS. If I'm gonna try to enroll them somewhere else, I'm not sure. The school board will be discussing the possible closures of Sable and Paris schools during their next school board meeting on Tuesday. No word yet, though, on whether or not they could make a decision. But teachers from Sable say that if they do move forward, that school could close as early as next May. Reporting in Aurora, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. All right, thank you, Christian. Today, several hundred people rallied at the state capitol in support of abortion rights. This large group spent the afternoon marching and chanting while holding homemade signs, all part of the nationwide Bans Off Our Bodies movement. They say they, sh they will show up in support of women's reproductive health care rights every weekend for as long as it takes. I've had to make that choice. I'm also a mother of two wonderful kids. I want my daughter to have that choice, too. Women will die. They will die. They, they are desperate. People don't have the financial mobility to be able just to pick up and go two states away and pay for hotel rooms and childcare to make these things happen. They have to stop legislating health care and um, stop uh, oppressing women. And the real, the real message that I'd like to share with people is that all of those who think that abortion is criminal or murder, I wish they would put their focus onto the number, the, the millions of children, American children living in poverty. A few counter protesters also showed up here at the Capitol expressing how they felt about the leaked SCOTUS draft. So we're out here uh, to confront the um, viewpoint that is out here with the um, Supreme Court uh, leak. Um, we're basically out here saying that murder is never okay, whether it's to the born or the unborn. And so that's the, the message that we have here today. Now we received a statement on these protests from Respect Life Denver. It says in part, we acknowledge the deep pain and woundedness that women feel and want them to know that we have answers of hope, healing and empowerment regarding their fertility, as well as their inherent value and dignity. Similar protests happened in at least 400 U.S. cities today. Washington, D.C. will likely have the largest event with more than 17,000 people expected to attend. Several of the groups organizing the Bands Off Our Bodies protests say they're already planning even more demonstrations. They're hoping to have those in the coming days and weeks as the nation awaits the high court's final decision on the future of abortion rights. The federal government is stepping up efforts to help families dealing with a nationwide baby formula shortage. Right now, 40% of America's formula supply is out of stock, leaving many shelves empty. Doctors are warning families not to ration or make your own formula. The biggest thing that parents need to avoid doing right now is trying to make that homemade formula or watered down formula, both of which can be absolutely catastrophic nutritionally for children. Now, the White House says it is working to increase supply by enacting several new measures, including giving families on government assistance the ability to buy other brands of formula, cracking down on price gouging, as well as importing more supply. The House Oversight Committee has also requested records from four of the largest manufacturers of baby formula. And it's not just baby formula. Americans are also struggling to find cars. Many dealers are low or have non-existent inventories. Denver 7's Patrick Perez explains what Colorado dealerships are doing to adapt. What's happening right now is what we saw happen with restaurants. They had to pivot during the pandemic to take out in order to stay open. In the case of dealerships, that's ordering new cars because they just don't have enough supply on the lots. Getting a new car these days requires a lot of patience. Well, things have not really improved and we're seeing the chip problem is still an issue across all manufacturers and it's a global problem. Supply and labor constraints continue to put a dent on new car inventory across the state. According to the Colorado Automobile Dealers Association, new car sales were down 10% statewide, 15% nationally in the first quarter. It's not a problem on demand. Demand for cars is as high as it ever has been, but uh, we have a supply problem. Kevin Shaughnessy with Phil Long Dealerships says while his Ford store in Denver isn't doing as bad as a statewide figure, his new car inventory is limited. But we've got uh, more than 100 and some here at this location. Uh, we have about twice that many used cars. And that's more than what some other dealerships have, with some reporting they have zero to only a few new cars on the lot. 
Because of this demand, dealerships are pre-ordering vehicles for customers, which may come with wait times of weeks or months. It was a slice of the business. It might be 10 or 15 percent of the business. Now we're seeing about 70, 80 percent of the business are people custom ordering what they want because the selections are low. When things will improve depends on who you ask. Shaughnessy says he expects it'll be within the next year. Tim Jackson with the Dealers Association has a more dire outlook. I don't think it's going to correct in 2022 and it may not get completely corrected in 2023. It might be 2024 before we're back to a more normalized market in the automotive sector. Patrick Perez, Denver 7. Well, patience is a virtue, I guess. Patrick, thank you. Denver is raising its COVID community level to medium as the city sees an increase in cases. The city says cases per 100,000 people now exceeds 200, shifting its level from low to medium. The increase in cases is being caused by a subvariant of the Omicron strain. Denver does not expect cases to rise to the level of the Omicron surge we saw during the winter. So what does raising the community risk mean for you? Well, Denver says if you are at high risk for severe illness, you should talk to a doctor about whether you need a mask or if you should take other precautions. You should also stay up to date with your COVID vaccines and get tested if you have symptoms. And it's not just Denver seeing COVID cases go up. Boulder County and Mineral County in Southwest Colorado are also raising their COVID levels to medium. In response to the rise in cases, the Boulder City Council says it will be returning to all virtual meetings. More than 200 firefighters spent overnight battling the High Park fire in Teller County. The fire started Thursday and has so far scorched more than 1,000 acres west of Cripple Creek. Officials say more than 100 people have been evacuated, but no homes have been listed. As of this morning, the fire is just 10% contained. Meantime, evacuation orders have been lifted for residents near Durango, but they are still on pre-evacuation alert this morning. La Plata County says the Ute Pass fire started around 4 p.m. yesterday, burning northeast of Durango between Horse Gulch and Ute Pass. So far, it's burned 30 acres and is 10% contained. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. One week after a man drowned in Cherry Creek State Reservoir, search crews have recovered his body today. They've since turned it over to the Arapahoe County Coroner's Office. Park officials say the man was tubing without a life jacket last week when he went under. Search crews have been out there all week long looking for his body. All right, coming up, a Colorado woman is not letting cancer keep her down. How she is helping others stay positive through their diagnosis. Plus, two Coloradans reaching new heights altogether. Now they're making history on the top of the world next. Winds gave us a bit of a break today, which was great news, not nearly as windy. Now the next thing we need is some rain, and I have some of that coming up in the seven-day forecast.